interwebs and thanks for tuning in to Trade Chat. My name is Panzer and today I am going to be discussing my favorite retro games of all time. I hope that you enjoy this video and if you do, remember to read it thumbs up. Before I get into the countdown, I just want to give a quick shout out and thank you to Loot Crate. It was their January 2015 crate, the Rewind crate, that inspired me to make this video. This month they are celebrating all things retro and geeky and gamery and all, all that good stuff. I'm real excited. It hit me in my nostalgia feels. There will be items from Star Wars and Voltron. There will be an exclusive licensed t-shirt. They said something else about something wearable. I don't know. There'll be a vinyl mashup figurine. All in all, I'm quite excited. If you would like to get the Rewind Crate for yourself, you have to sign up before January 19th. You can do so at lootcrate.com slash tradechat and get a discount of your first crate with code tradechat. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's get right into the countdown. Number 11 on my list is The Legend of Zelda, which would be Zelda 1 for the NES. And you know it's funny because I didn't actually play this game, but it's on my list because it holds a very special place in my nostalgia feels bank. I remember my dad playing this game for literal hours. Like my mom would get so mad at him because he would just play Legend of Zelda all day. And it was the gold cartridge NES. I remember this. And it's funny because I remember as an adult, I said something to him one day and I was like, Dad, remember all that Legend of Zelda you used to play? And he's like, yeah, I played a little bit of that game. And I was like, no, you didn't. You you played that game for like a year straight. You think it's why you and mom divorced? Yeah, I played a little. <laughs> and that is why Legend of Zelda number 11 on my list of the best retro games of all time in Panzer's opinion. Number 10 on my list is Duck Hunt for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Because as a youngin, as a wee little panzer, I was known as the duck murderer. That's not true. I wish I was known as the duck murderer. That would have been cool. But really, I was terrible at duck hunt, and I would put the TV, like, or the gun, not the TV. I'd put the gun, like, right against the TV and shoot them, like, point blank. It was brutal. Number nine on my list of the greatest retro games of all time is Tetris. And I still play Tetris. Tetris is a good game and hard. And it starts out easy, so it like builds your confidence up and then it just crushes your soul. Just crushes it. It's rude. Number eight on my list is Super Mario Kart for the Super Nintendo. This is the game that started it all. I didn't actually have a Super Nintendo. My aunt had a Super Nintendo, and I would go to her house, and I'd play it and be awful. But it was so fun. And Mario Kart is one of my favorite games of all time, so you've got to pay homage where homage is due. Yo. Number seven on my list of the greatest retro games of all time is Frogger. Frogger is an amazing game. I remember we had some system that had Frogger in it. I don't even know which one it was, to be honest with you, because I think it was like a retro version of Frogger for a newer gen system. Not that new, like PlayStation 1. I can't remember. Anyways, I would play Frogger with my sister, who was like four at the time. And she was like a four-year-old child prodigy of Frogger. It was ridiculous. So I was like, if she was four, I would have been like nine or ten. Do you know how angry it makes a nine or ten-year-old to get just repeatedly stomped in Frogger by their like toddler age sister. I don't even know why I'm putting this on my list of favorite games. The memories I have playing Frogger are nothing but salt. You could make beef jerky with my memories of playing Frogger with my sister. That's real talk. Number six on my list is Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> no 
other reason than that is the game where Yoshi was introduced. And Yoshi is not only one of my favorite, like, Nintendo characters ever, he's one of my favorite video game characters of all time. Yoshi's the man. Number five on my list of the best retro games of all time is Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis. Sega! We got the Sega Genesis when I was six years old. I like vividly remember it was like the family Christmas gift. And I played the heck out of Sonic the Hedgehog, which is funny because as an adult, I went back and tried to play Sonic the Hedgehog. And it's a hard game. It's a really hard game. I can't imagine that I got very far as a little kid, but I remember really, really enjoying it and watching my dad playing it a lot. My dad was kind of a nerd. Looking back, my dad was kind of a nerd. A nerd in denial about his nerddom, but he played a lot of video games. Yeah, he did. Number four on my list is the Oregon Trail, which I played almost exclusively at school. The Oregon Trail meant that your school day was going to be a good day. Where I went to school, I played it in like fourth and fifth grade, and it was like a treat to get to play the Oregon Trail. When I was a little kid, there was only like four or five computers in the classroom. They were like big old honkers of computers. And you had to take turns, you know? And usually you had to take turns between kids who earned it. So you had to be good, you had to get good grades, whatever it was. And man, was I try hard so that I could have my turn at Oregon Trail only to die of dysentery. Like, very soon afterwards. I always would try to make like the good choices, but no, I always like flooded my wagon or my oxen died or I died of dysentery or hunger. I would never have made it as a settler to the West. Never. Number three on my list is Pokemon Red and Blue. And you know what's funny about this is that I would not take this off of my list for money. Like, I would just literally fight to the death in a cage match that Pokemon Red and Blue is one of the best retro games of all time, but I didn't actually have a Game Boy. I did not play this game until I was an adult. I don't know if you guys remember, but a while back I used to work at a game store. That was the first time I actually played Pokemon Red and Blue, and it spiraled into a full-fledged Pokemon game obsession. When I was a little kid, like when I was like in fourth or fifth grade, I had all the traded cards, and I had tons of Pokemon toys, I like religiously watched the television show, Ash, Misty, and Brock, those were my jams, and I never had actually played the video games until I was older. I did play Pokemon Snap and Pokemon Stadium because my friend had a Nintendo 64, but I never had a Game Boy or a Game Boy Color or anything like that. My, I was, I was no more coordinated as a child than I am now, so I don't really blame my parents for telling me that they weren't going to spend money on something I would inevitably break because I would have broken it. That's neither here nor there. Pokemon Red and Blue, awesome games. <laughs> Number two on my list of the greatest retro games of all time is Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo System. <laughs> Donkey Kong Country! is an amazing game. Oh my god, I love that game. I actually got a Super Nintendo when I was in high school, which I know is super weird. Like, I didn't have one when I was a kid, but I bought one when I was in high school, and I got Donkey Kong for it. And I, I literally, like, locked myself in my bedroom for a weekend to beat Donkey Kong, which is this game that everybody had played. It was already, like, 10 or 15 years old at that point. And no, I had to beat it. I locked myself in the room to, like, beat Donkey Kong. And you get to the very last level, and it's, like, this ship... So satisfying. Literally such a satisfying feeling. I think prior to beating Donkey Kong Country, the only game I had 100%ed was Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. So, 
it's like it, it holds some real important feels in my in my heart place. And number one on Panzer's list of the greatest retro games of all time is the Super Mario Brothers for Nintendo Entertainment System. Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3 separately on my list, but I thought that was kind of cheating a little bit. I stuck it with just one, but let's be honest, that is an amazing game. That is the first game I ever played. That is, I bet if you logged my hours in Super Mario uh, for NES that it probably rivals World of Warcraft. I played that game for years, for years. I had it, it was the first system I ever got, the first game I ever got. I remember I, when I was really little, I, I don't actually think I could even play. I would sit and just hold the controller and pretend I was playing while my dad was playing. And my mom had a friend who had a son who was like quite a bit older than me. He was like seven or eight years older than me. So he was like a young teenager when I was like a little kid. And I thought he was so cool because he knew all the tricks to see at Super Mario. Like he would jump on the turtle against the pipe and get all sorts of free lives. And he knew where all the warp zones were and he could like speed run. It was, oh, he was so cool. And I just wanted to know all of his tricks. And I spent so many hours practicing. And this was the days before the internet. This was the days when, like, you had to find out about those tricks from a friend. There was no, there was no, there was no internet. There was no Google. Google did not exist. And then when I was older, I had this really weird, like, ghetto gaming system that had just, like, games loaded on it, and they were all, like, Nintendo games. So once again, I played a ton of Mario, and that system actually had um, all these lost levels, per se, I guess. I don't know if they were ever sold or packaged, but they were, like, really freaking difficult levels of Mario that were not in the original version. Anyways, I played a lot of Mario. That's what I'm getting at. So I think that's the greatest retro game ever, because without Mario, where would I even be today? <sighs> I apologize. Anytime I do one of these lists, it just goes to a really ridiculous place. I appreciate that you guys still watch them. Let me know in the comment section below what your top 11 retro games of all time are. And yeah, that's it. I'm gonna go. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I love you all. You're in my hearts. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Thanks again to Loot Crate. Goodbye. 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 Number six is the Negativitron from Little Big Planet 2. Big Planet 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, and the Negativitron is a really tough boss for like a platformer type game, and I had a ton of fun playing it. It's fun to play solo player, it's fun to play multiplayer, it's just a fun game, and I really can't wait for Little Big Planet 3. I already pre-ordered it, but I'm kind of dumb, and I bought it online, so I'm not going to get it the day it comes out. And that's, that's the real boss battle. It's the boss battle of my soul.